Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 opened last weekend and has already earned $650 million worldwide. It's on target to be one of the most successful 3D films ever. But for every Harry Potter, there's a 3D flop, like The Last Airbender or Jackass 3D. So does 3D increase the likelihood of a box office success? To discuss, we're joined by the director of a very successful 3D movie. Kevin Gruder directed Saw 3D, which debuted at number one in its opening weekend. So Kevin, uh, what's the secret to making 3D work? Is it the genre? What is it? Well, uh, it's it's not really a secret that's uh, different than any other film. You have to you have to have a great story and great actors, and um, you know, 3D is just an enhancement on top on top of it. So, I think if a film was going to do well uh, as a 2D movie, it's probably going to do well as a 3D movie. Um, 3D, I, I got to say, not every film is necessarily appropriate to the medium. So, um, some movies just uh, just don't look as good. Uh, I'm also not a big fan of 3D conversions. I think Hollywood might have um, hurt itself a little bit by releasing a whole slew of films that were converted to 3D after they were shot and um, th th there's there's a kind of an ugly look to some of those films so that mm -hmm. that's a bit of a problem. Well one of the reasons that there was so much emphasis on making 3D films is because of what a boost to revenue it was for the movie studios. I mean you had Avatar come out, uh, you had Alice in Wonderland and the, the industry thought wow this is how we helped to boost profits. Um, why do you think that even with your successful film that maybe 3D wasn't the right way to go. Well, I think for, for my film, it definitely was a good way to go. Saw 3D, the seventh in the franchise, was actually the most um, profitable overseas, where 3D is still cresting. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's only... Um, I'm sorry, if, you're, if you're, your question is... Um, I have in my notes here that you said Saw 3 performed well, but you didn't think it was the right format for it. Oh, I can say, well, here's what I would say in that regard. Um, 3D looks best in very bright films. Um, I think the children's animated films that are in 3D uh, are probably the best use of the medium. Horror films tend to be very dark, and uh, the Saw films traditionally are very dark and murky, and that's, that's just part of the look of the, uh, of the genre. Um, but 3D, I think, is at its worst when it's very dark. The, the, image, the images just need to be very brightly lit to get the full 3D effect. Um, that said, I did have to uh, accommodate that with my visual style. So the film, the film has a different look that, that made the most of the 3D. So in, in that regard, I think it worked out well. Now, the other element here that we haven't talked about is just the, the price of a ticket. 3D inflates the cost of walking in the door. So, I mean, do you think to some extent it was just the consumer's inability to pay up? That has also made some of these other 3D films less successful than Avatar. Well, I, I, like I said, the 3D conversion, I think, really hurt us. Uh, David Geffen, I think, was one of the first to say that, that Hollywood might be killing the goose that lays the golden eggs by charging people more for movies that, that just don't look that good. Um, if, you, if, if, say, 40% of the iPods that were out there or iPads on the market had, a, had lower technology and a, and a murky, dim look, and yet there was no labeling that indicated that it was, there was something right. different about this from, from the other ones, then it would have hurt iPods in general. Um, the, the 3D movies aren't Labeled to say whether they were actually shot in 3D or converted afterwards. So I think I think that's been a big problem. So um, there's a certain amount of 3D fatigue. People have memories of, of going to 3D movie and, and getting a headache or an eyeball ache, as it were. So, right. um, uh, for, for me, though, a, a really good 3D movie, I just last night saw Transformers 3 in, at the Arclight Dome in Hollywood, and it was an amazing visual experience. So uh, I think that for the right film, it, it really is magnificent. So would you choose to continue to work in 3D? I would, I would happily make another 3D film. Um, I don't know that, uh, that I'd do it in another dark horror film, but uh, certainly a, a big spectacle action film, uh, I'd love to do it again. I, I, I think that it is a very important technology. Films have been shot more or less the same way for 100 years, so it's nice in the 21st century to be doing something that really takes advantage of the, of the technology that's out there. Uh, if nothing else, I think it's a stepping stone to even more immersive um, virtual reality-like uh, visual arts. So uh, it's, it's exciting to be part of it. It's, it, it. It feels like it's still a pioneering field. If this is a, a stepping stone, I mean, how far are we to that next wave? And, and have you already started integrating some of those new technologies um, into your films? 
I think that I think that some filmmakers have something like Avatar uh, combines live action with a completely digitally generated environment. Uh, like I said, I think that when you're when you're creating a film completely in post production, you have total control over over the uh, the image. And um, one day, I think we'll be able to film live action and give it the same very uh, pronounced depth that you see in uh, in very good animated films like Toy Story Three. All right, Kevin, thank you very much for giving us uh, your expertise and insight. Appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Have a great weekend. You too. Take care.